Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Germany's Max Planck Society and the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy are investing about 150 million rand into South Africa's Meerkat Radio Telescope Array program. Keith Campbell joins me in studio to discuss this development. Hi Keith. What is all this money going to be used for? Well, the Germans are going to use the money uh, to design and build receivers for the uh, 64 dishes, for each of the 64 dishes that will make up the Meerkat radio telescope array. Now, the receiver is where the radio waves are finally collected. You know, you have the, uh, the big dish which catches and focuses the radio waves coming in from the universe. And on, on the uh, dish design uh, used by Meerkat is, is then concentrated into a smaller dish and they end up in the receivers. Now you have different receivers for different uh, wavelengths, for different frequency bands uh, on a radio telescope. This uh, adds considerably to the range of uh, frequencies that the meerkat dishes will be able to receive. Uh, the dishes will all be fitted with two South African designed and built receivers for different frequency bands and the Germans will now provide receivers that will cover a third frequency band. In the case of the Germans it's going to be what's called the S band which is a frequency, frequency band between 2 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz. So this considerably expands the amount of science that the Meerkat will be able to do and make it even more attractive, but it already was an attractive uh, instrument, and make it even more attractive to both local and international scientists in the future. I should add that the Meer each Meerkat dish is designed uh, and is fitted with a carousel which can mount a number of receivers, and not just three. So there is still space for more receivers uh, to come in the future should any other country wish to supply them. And of course, there's space for a complete replacement of receivers uh, decades down the line during a major upgrade, for example. ISCA, South Africa and Vox Telecom have also partnered to provide telecommunication services in the Kuru surrounding the Meerkat technology. Can you discuss the significance of this? Right, well, as you correctly say, SKA South Africa is the organization that's responsible for, among other things, the Meerkat Radio Telescope. Uh, it gets its name from the fact it is responsible for the South African element of the Square Kilometre Array, which is a gigantic international radio telescope program that will be the cores will be co-hosted by South Africa and Australia. There'll be some outstations in some other countries. Now, Meerkat will, in due course, be incorporated into phase one of the SKA. Now, both Meerkat and the SKA uh, will be made up of extremely sensitive instruments. Uh, radio telescope is basically an incredibly sensitive radio receiver. This means it's very vulnerable to what's called radio frequency interference. And just about everything that emits radio waves generates radio frequency interference. That includes a lot of uh, electronic equipment which is not actually broadcast equipment. But this means that things like cell phones are very bad news for uh, Meerkat or, or SKA if they are too close to the instrument. Now, of course, to use cell phones, you need to have the whole infrastructure in place, the coverage in place, and that a conventional telecommunications infrastructure, cell phones, uh, radio, including you know radio stations, television, all that would create a lot of radio frequency interference for these instruments. So the South African government passed what they call the Astronomical Geographic Advantage Act, which imposes restrictions on various developments within designated zones. There is one uh, area for optical astronomy centered on the South African Astronomical Observatory uh, at Sutherland, and there's another one for radio astronomy, 
which is centered on the Meerkat course site, which is about 90 kilometers west of a small town called Carnarvon. Now, there is, there's a core protected area, and beyond that, there's a central protected area. And together, these two extend, extend very roughly by about 500 kilometers by 500 kilometers. It's not a square, it's, it's, a, it's an asymmetrical polygon if you plot the map. But there are two or three small towns and about 300 farms in this zone. And they, of course, need telecommunications. So the whole purpose of this deal is to provide a way of giving the people in this zone reliable, affordable telecommunications that doesn't interfere with the operation of the radio telescopes. And this is being done by providing uh, satellite broadband communications uh, in what's called the KA band. Uh, the frequencies used by the uh, satellite communications are higher than the frequencies that will be employed by the radio telescopes. Also, the technology used, it comes from uh, a Middle Eastern partner company of Vox, the company is called Yassat, uh, involves uh, transmitting uh, in targeted pulses and not in a broad indiscriminate coverage of a large area. On the ground, uh, the customer uh, is equipped with a very small aperture terminal, a VSAT satellite terminal, um, and to receive and transmit. And it, the system will supply uh, both broadband data and, if the customer wants, also voice telephony. That adds some extra cost. Uh, a key point is that SKA South Africa is going to subsidize the capital cost of the installation of the system. So the users, the people in the towns, the farms, will only have to pay the subscription costs. And the system is also going to be set up to ensure, for example, that on a farm, the farm workers will be able to use the system as well as the farm owners. So it's very important because it ensures, indeed, it improves uh, telecommunications coverage of this part of the Karoo, where the coverage is very poor to start off with, while protecting the radio telescopes that are going to be built there and operated there. And have they mentioned a timeline for this project to take place? Uh, the initial contract is for two years. Uh, beyond that, uh, it's not clear yet. Thanks, Keith. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.